Recently, Tesla filed to use a new radar chip in their cars. And when I read it, I was like, wow, this is exactly what they were not going to do. In this video, I will explain new Tesla radar chip, which is now built by Tesla in-house. And actually, why do they need it? What is radar? Radar stands for radio detection and ranging. It measures position and the velocity of the object using radio waves, similar to those used in mobile communication. Radar sends a radio wave and then sends the reflection. The radio wave is traveling at the speed of light until it hits some target. Let's say a car in front of you. Then the wave gets reflected by measuring time it takes for radio wave to travel back and forth, we can calculate the distance to the target. Basically, radar is just like a camera, but instead of color, each pixel gets information about the range and the velocity of the target, thanks to the Doppler effect. Several years ago, Tesla decided to move away from radar. And now they are betting their autonomous driving system on camera-based vision only. They argument this by the fact that humans drive cars well just with eyes and brain. Using cameras and silicon neural networks seems to be the logical solution. At some point of time, the digital brain will be as good as our brain. And the eyes, the cameras, they are already as good or even better. So now they need to focus on developing the brain. Now, why other automakers are still betting on radar? In many cases, when the visibility is bad, radar can still give you reliable information. When it's totally dark, when it's foggy, rains and snows, radar can still give you information about velocity and range to the object in your field of view. Cameras and lighters are arguably less effective since they rely on visible and close to visible light. While the wavelength of the radar is larger compared to light, this allows a rough wave to penetrate better through droplets of water and it makes the radar superior for bad weather conditions. So if Tesla is equipped with a radar, it is done by Continental. It is actually a front-facing radar for adaptive cruise control. It is so-called FMCW radar operating at 77 GHz with a modulation bandwidth of 1 GHz. Why radar operates at such a high frequency? Mainly because its frequency range where they can get high modulation bandwidth. Everything below is actually occupied for communication. And also, operating frequency related to the maximum velocity it can measure. And why do we need high bandwidth? Basically, this parameter shows how precise you can resolve the distance to the target. With 1 GHz modulation bandwidth, theoretically, you can get about 15 cm resolution. So, at long-range distances, like 200 meters, this resolution is more than enough. But for short distances, like for a pedestrian right in front of you, or for parking, that's not enough. At the moment, Tesla puts radars in all cars in Europe. So, this whole box is the radar. But what is inside the box? Here, on the first board, is MCU, so microcontroller. These are probably power management chip and the memory. This microcontroller is used to control the RF part. To put it simple, it detects objects from the raw data based on some algorithms. Here, on the next plate, is the RF frontend, which actually consists of three chips transmitter, 
receiver and oscillator. Around the area front end, there are a bunch of microwave antennas for transmit and receive. This is the world of analog and RF. And I must say, it is pretty different from mostly digital chips from Intel and AMD. Now, Tesla filed an application to FCC to certify new radar to be used in their cars. I had a look and based on the labels and ID number, the manufacturer of the new radar is Tesla itself. This, of course, doesn't mean that you get Tesla silicon inside. I think most likely it's built out of chips from other chip makers. Tesla Radar is operating at the same 77 GHz frequency and it is tested at 700 MHz modulation bandwidth. This indicates that it is still front-facing long-range radar. Actually, it fits perfectly to the Tesla concept of building as much stuff as possible in-house. And another thing, not to depend on complex supply chain. At least here, they managed to get rid of one tier one supplier. If I have to bet, Tesla built the radar themselves in order to lower the price. And also, this is a way to get around the chip shortage problem. Because many Model 3 around the world, like in Europe, come with a radar and they need to have these radars years in front because you need to replace them in case it's broken. And exactly these kind of radars, these kind of basic radars, are right now in the highest demand because it's used by other automakers like Audi, Volkswagen, and so on. So many new cars are coming equipped with this radar. So it is a good step to partially mitigate the chip shortage problem. Tesla filed to FCC because they have a new product, new device to qualify. And this doesn't come from Continental anymore. To me, it doesn't look like they're trying to bring back the radar for sensor fusion. Otherwise, they would have tested in more conditions for medium range applications. This radar doesn't seem like a step forward, because if they would like to make a step forward, they could go for a more modern and more advanced radar, like the 4D imaging radar from Arbe. This one is able to scan the environment with the RF beam and then combine the information about the environment in a point cloud picture. In 2020, there were news that Tesla is engaging with Arbe to use their 4D imaging radar. However, this new radar doesn't look like an imaging radar because it has modulation bandwidth up to 1 gigahertz. While imaging radars are usually more precise and work in shorter distances. The one from Arbe actually using up to 2 gigahertz modulation bandwidth. Or another fancy radar is the one from UNDA. It's also 4D imaging radar which uses similar to mobile phone digital code modulation. These guys are partnered with the Tesla's rival Fisker. So Ocean One EV will be featuring this kind of radar. And what is interesting, right now in Tesla there are actually not one but two radars. Recently they've announced the second radar for the in-cabin sensing. Again, it is Tesla branded. It is a radar similar to the one from the Soli technology. We all love Soli, right? This radar is used inside Google Home devices and also Google Phone. It is used for presence detection and gesture recognition. It can be also used for vital signs detection like heartbeat, breathing. When you sleep, it can actually measure your heartbeat. At the moment, Tesla uses it to detect if there is a child left in the cabin. 
but there are much more potential applications for the in-cabin radar. The problem of autonomous driving is complex. It is complex from both hardware and software perspectives. And sensor fusion is hard in particular. You have the perception, right? Cameras, radar, LiDAR, sensors, and you need to have a planning. In order to make easy planning, you need to have one source of information. You need sensor fusion here. You need to join the information from all the sources and then give it to the planning engine. And now, if you have camera, radar and LiDAR, they all have their own effects. Radar gives you just one point. This is like looking in binocular. Camera is like looking with your eyes. And LiDAR, LiDAR has trouble seeing too far. What actually happens? You build models based on the camera, and then you need to marry it with the information from the radar, and then overlap it with the LiDAR. And all of this should happen in real time, because you want to have at least 30 frames per second, right? It is what your eye is doing. It's really complicated. In any case, you need to solve the problem of computer vision and planning based on it. And now the sensor fusion problem is just another problem on top of it. That's why Tesla approach totally makes sense to me. However, I don't think they can make it to level 4 or 5 of autonomy without having sensor redundancy, because safety is very, very critical for automotive. In general, there was this consensus that you need to have three technologies so they can vote. So two out of three should agree then on one decision. You know, the only car which is officially qualified for level three autonomy is Mercedes. The autonomous driving feature is available in S-Class and AQS cars. Which means these cars can make decisions on their own, such as overtake other cars. And they use the fusion of LiDAR, a bunch of radars, sensors and cameras in their system. It might be that the radar is a must to be qualified for the next level of autonomy. So Tesla will have to put radars regulatory. In general, I love the trend of building more and more chips in-house. Tesla is already building FSD hardware and they're also working on Dodge and they're for sure more to come. Make sure to share this video with your friends. And now you may like to watch the video where I explain the Tesla FSD chip, how it's built, how it works, I will link it here. I am looking forward to the big tech party, so Tesla ID, for sure I will cover it in my videos. Thanks for watching and see you soon, ciao!